the Lord here.
Hallelujah. Oh, Spirit of God, we're in the house.
Even before I began to preach the word of God that morning, he began to speak the Holy Spirit. There's no respect of anybody. He'll go ahead of us. We're just men. And it's okay because we're in his presence, right? And we want him to take control. We don't want men to take control. We want him to take control. And as we allow him to take control, there were three healings that morning. And through me, uh, I didn't know God used me that morning and he used uh, Brother and Sister Rachel as well. Like, there were a heart condition that I called out that morning. There was cancer that morning. There was cancer, I believe there was. And then there was a diabetes. And we called it out. And I didn't call it out until the Holy Spirit told me. And I began to pray. I didn't even have to lay my hands on anybody. The Holy Spirit did it all. By the end of the by the end of the meeting, and I gave the word that morning. And as I gave the word that morning, they received it. And then the pastor comes up to me and he says, How did you know? I have three people. And those three people were the ones that she called out. So to God be the glory. Amen. So if he, if he can do it in Los Alamos, he can do it here too. And that's why I'm telling you right now, declare. If you if you really feel right now that you need a healing in your body or you need a healing in your mind, you need a healing in your emotion. You need a healing because maybe you're grieving and you're going through a circumstance because you've lost a loved one. Hey, he can do it. My God is the way maker. He's the way maker. Come on. We're going to sing this, this song right now and I want you to just declare it. I want you to declare it because he's here right now. And he just changed everything. So I, I'm going to go to a different song. I'm innocent worship because I know he's healing you right now. I believe he's doing it right now. He's healing you right now. Come 
want people of God. Come on, just begin to speak to him right now. Come on, if, you, if you're feeling this morning, come on, just begin. Just begin. Shalom, I'm Come on, people of God, give him your give him your time. I know we have different songs, but this, this is all about him right now. Come on. Come on, if you're swimming field, just begin. Begin to speak in other tongues right now in the name of Jesus. As the Spirit gives you utterance, the Bible says as the Spirit gives you utterance right now, begin to speak in other tongues right now. Do you know that when we're speaking in other tongues, the enemy does not understand what we're saying. And he has no control. Because this service does not belong to him, it belongs to Jesus. Come on. testimony to something that maybe someone is wondering about. This morning as I came in here, the people started coming in. There was uh, actually Brother John and Sister Rachel that came in to my office and said, Pastor, this morning at 4 o'clock in the morning as we were praying, God gave us a word for you before the church. And the word that the Lord gave was that no weapon. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. God is in control of everything. And not that I have to defend myself in any way, shape, or form, because I know who has my back and our back. But see, this last week, somebody, supposedly, somebody told a, a lady that moved into town, I don't remember her name, but she asked about the church and she said that somebody told her not to come because I didn't like black people and uh, that we were prejudiced. Then somebody wrote something about Pastor John and myself this last week as well, that we were, that we make fun of gays, that we make fun of people that are, that are, that are in wheelchairs and crippled or what, and, and what was it, what was the word? Handicapped. Let me tell you something. I don't care how long and how loud hell is going to rattle. Yeah. Our God is still in control. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Get excited with it because of what God is doing. Yeah. You know, I don't care what color of skin you have. We didn't make a choice. We didn't have a choice. I, I, there's people that are born handicapped and some that have had accidents. Brother Randy is one of our assets in this place. He's in a wheelchair. The man can do a whole lot more than some of the people that can flap it. 
Oh, hallelujah. Jesus is still sitting on his throne. If you're listening this morning and you're, you're, you're African American, you're, you're, you're Native American, you're white American, I don't care if you're not even an American. We have a couple here in our church. They're not here this morning because they're doing something else in Albuquerque today, but they're, they're Filipinos. They're part of our family. Many, many years ago, we, we were just a, there was just a handful of beaters that were all of us gathered together in, in, in our little church. And when in the middle of the service, this, this tall man walks in, about six foot two. I had never seen him, and then I remember, oh, he's native. He was part of our family, and Sister Nina is still part of our family until, he, until the Lord took him home. You know, we've had some black, we've had some, we've got, we've had Mexicans, we've had, we have, oh, it doesn't matter where you're from, I don't care where you're from. Let's just bow our knee before the one that is God of everyone. His name is Jesus, somebody. His name is Jesus. The devil is angry because he knows that revival is not coming. Revival is already here. I said revival is here. Hallelujah. There's people, there's people that are giving their lives to Jesus. Yesterday a young boy came up and said, Pastor, I was in prison for I don't know how long. Listen, I'm nobody. It humbles me when somebody mentions my name in that area. They said, I'm nobody, but when I was in prison, I remembered what you used to tell me in class. If you have a problem, run to Jesus. This morning I want to tell you, those of us that are here and those that are listening, you have a problem, run to Jesus. Call to Jesus if you have to. You have a marriage problem, you have a relationship problem, you have a drug problem, you have a, 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 an image problem, you're prejudiced, you're a bigot, whatever hell has thrown at you, I want you to know this morning that we can call out the name that is above the ladder. The name of Jesus Christ. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you're gay and you're listening to us, Jesus loves you. Amen. If you're a, if you're a, a druggie, if you're a junkie, Jesus loves you. Amen. If you're a male or a female prostitute, Jesus loves you. Amen. Enough of this, enough of this hypocrisy. Listen, listen, our doors are open for whoever wants to walk in the door because Jesus said, come up to me and I will give you rest. The only one that I have a problem with and we still love you and God loves you are those religious nuts that are running around there thinking they know more than God. But if you'll fall on your knees and you'll proclaim the name of Jesus and you say, he is the Lord of my life, Listen, we, yesterday we were, we were cleaning our neighborhood. And there was, there was a young man that, that I didn't know was in our neighborhood. And, and he said, do you think, I invited him to church. And he said, you know what, I am going to come. But, but I, I'm tired. And I said, I don't care if you're tired. I don't care if you're tired. In fact, the Bible says that he's going to he'll tattoo his name, in the, your name, and my name, in the palm of his hand. So if you think you're the first one with a tattoo, you're way back in line because he's he came with he already has my name tattooed on his the palm of his wrist or the palm of his hand I should say. Jesus loves us. I said Jesus loves you. I'm gonna invite you. Those of you that are sitting, would you stand with me? Let's let's, let's just make a joyful noise to the Lord this morning. Come on, I believe there's a revival spirit here this morning. Yeah. Here's everybody sitting in the house. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Raise your voice and shout to the Lord with a shout of triumph. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Shout to the Lord with a shout of triumph. The sick are going to be healed.
the Lord. No weapon. No weapon for me yet to show prosper. Ningún arma forjada contra ti prosperará. And listen to the rest of the scripture. And every lying tongue that rises up against you, you shall bring down in judgment. Ningún arma forjada contra ti prosperará. That's a promise. That's a heritage of the children of God. Listen, this morning, there's a healer in the house. It's not about making noise. It's not about clapping hands. It's about making your heart available to the king. This morning, the king of kings is in the house. He's here to fill us. He's here to heal. He's here to restore. That's why we sing Hallelujah. Come on, raise your voice. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Yes, we win! We win! 
Because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bless God. You may be seated. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. No weapon. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Somebody needs to hear this besides me. Somebody needs to hear this besides me. Ningún arma forjada contra ti prosperará. Yes. We used to sing a chorus when we were kids. The devil's mad and I am glad. He lost the soul that he thought he had. But you know what? When the devil starts to howl, I mean to howl and howl around, we're not very happy. We start to say, Lord, why? Why me? Why us? Twenty twenty has been a year for records. Not only in the physical, in the spiritual. There's there's a there's a war that started since January. I'm gonna ask something today and that I want for you to commit. You don't have to write it out on a paper and we're not gonna pass out a calendar and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'd like to see who will commit this week to pray and fast. Hold on a second. Who will commit to pray and fast tomorrow, Monday? Okay. Put your hands down. Who will commit to pray and fast on Tuesday? Okay. Put your hands down. Who will commit to pray and fast on Wednesday? All right. Thursday? Thursday? All right. Friday? Friday, okay. Sabado? Saturday? No Saturdays? Okay. Listen, fasting is not just missing or skipping a meal. Fasting is taking the time that we would spend at the table or wherever we eat and spend it in the presence of the Lord. What do I want us to pray for? I want us to pray for our community. That includes Chama. That includes Peñasco, Joaquin, Los Alamos. There's a spirit out there. And let me tell you the sad thing is that that spirit is not foaming up or fomenting up excitement against the church in the world. It's amongst so-called Christians. I want to be brave enough to say, Satan, shut up and go back to hell where you belong. Leave the people of God alone. We've got the power. Not good English, but we get the message. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. There's a sinister demonic spirit, not only here, but it's worldwide, especially in America. Everything is, everything it seems, it's coming apart at the seams. And I, I was listening this morning when I was waiting for it to be a little, get a little later so we could come. And I was listening. said, regardless of who wins in November, there's going to be problems in the streets. Amen. And Pastor Dana, I can't remember his name, Cover, last name. Coverstone. Coverstone. That was one of the dreams that God gave him. That he saw, he looked in November, God told him, the cities, cities in America will be on fire. People will be blaming each other. There's, 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 some, there's, some, there's some groups, there's some 
people out there that are fomenting stuff. We need to come against it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. People, we can't just sit back. It's not time to just sit back. It's not just another election. Our country is on the line. We must pray and we must fast. Forget the fact that you're a Democrat or a Republican. Think about the fact that you're the redeemed of the Lord. The Democrats never paid a penny for you, anything we have. The Democrats haven't either, and the liberal, what are the other, one of the other ones? The independents don't know if they're coming or going. Maybe I'm one of those. The one that paid the price and has forged the way is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen? Are you happy? Are you happy? Very happy? It's time for the offering, lady. They're all happy. Mike, would you, would you help them, please? Do you have a fast song?
Bless God. Isn't he awesome? The battle belongs to the Lord. La batalla le pertenece a Dios. The battle belongs to the Lord. Regardless of the battle you and I are facing this morning, God wants us to know that we don't have to lose any sleep over it. God wants us to know that He has our back. As we say here, He's got our back. Maybe this morning you're facing a battle that is physical. Maybe your body's not well. He's still the healer. I said he's still the healer. Maybe you're facing a battle of relationships, job, finances. The cattle, the silver and the gold and the thousand hills are hidden. And he will provide for all of our needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Maybe you're losing your job. Maybe this COVID thing, spirit, has drained you spiritually. We don't have a, what is the name of the company, the cars that is electric? Tesla? Tesla? Tesla. Tesla. Well, we're not one of those. But he is the plug that we can plug into and get our spiritual strength right back. They that wait upon the Lord shall be good. Bless the Lord. But that's just that's just setting us up for what's coming next. It's the word of the Lord. Don't forget that we start tomorrow with those of you that are praying and fasting, whether it's uh, 24 hours, whether it's one meal, whether it's half a day, whether it's up till supper time. That's up to you between you and God. But what I was saying a while ago is that our prayer, our, our fasting is not just to say, well, I, I, I'm fasting today, I'm not, I'm not eating. That's not what it's about. We're not eating because we're dedicating that time to have intimacy with God and hear from the Lord. Oh, how we need to hear from God. I said, oh, how we need to hear from the Lord. We need to hear that saith the Lord. And this morning, we're going to set ourselves up to do that. Can we have a little thingy? A little thing of a jigger? My, my, my germs are anointed. But uh, I don't want the anointing to somebody else to take the anointing. Well, not that bad. Bless the Lord. Are you ready for the word? Are we ready for the word? Yes. The word of the, 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 the Bible says that faith comes by hearing. Yes. And hearing. And hearing. Yes. The word, are you waving at me for some reason? Yeah. All right. Can you turn and maybe reach your hands towards her? Father, we just spoke about the fact that Jesus Christ paid the price for our healing. Yes, yes. In the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53, the word of God says, and by his stripes we were, past tense, healed. Yes, yes, yes. We thank you for the healing of this lady's body. We thank you, Lord, that there would be a touch from her head to her feet even now. And Father, I pray for healing emotional, spiritual, and physical. That this morning when she walks out of here, she might be able to say, if she hasn't yet, and be able to say, I am redeemed. Amen. I am saved. I am a child of God. Father, I bind fear and con confusion and anxiety and anything that would come her way because of that. Amen. We bind it in the mighty and precious and holy and strong name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We speak healing to her body right now. And proclaim her healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everyone said, amen. amen and amen. Bless the Lord. He was using his dirty tissue. Thank you. That's what everyone called it. You clean that with all your germs, you leave your germs for me. Thank you. Appreciate it. Praise God. How many of you are happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Let's give God a hand praise. Amen? <laughs> now I got this wet wipey over here. Thank you. <laughs> this morning. <laughs> Go over something else. <laughs> this morning. The title of this morning's message is It's Time to Cast Your Nets. Amen. Say that with me. Say it's time. it's time. Come on, say it's time. 
to cast your nets. So obviously you know what I'm going, what I'm talking about this morning. It's about fishing. Everybody say fishing. How many love to fish? Raise your hand. Oh, come on. I'm not going to call you up. I'm not going to ask you to show me pictures. How many love fishing? Raise your hand. All right. So fishing is fun. I think it's fun. So it's one of my hobbies as a family. I, I was fishing since I was a little guy. My brother and I, we love it. At a young age, we were always doing it. Now my boys do it. And it's just an awesome time. It's one of our hobbies. Let me tell you some of our fishing stories. Earl's not here this morning, so Earl, if you're listening, <laughs> it's, it's your story, but I'm going to share it, okay? We were fishing up there. I believe it was, it was in Santa Barbara. And we were fishing with spinners, and we were catching and doing it. It was just a fun time. And we're going, and he's like, I need to get to that bank on the other side. I know there's fish there. So I'm saying, okay, go for it, man. So there's this big log. He's like, I can cross that. And of course, you know, the logs are always wet because the water is splashing, the river is coming over it. He's like, I got this, I got this. I was like, dude, be careful. So there he goes, and he's over there going step by step, big log, and he's going, and he's going, and I'm watching him, and all of a sudden I, I turn to the side, and I hear this huge thump, like, like huge, hard. And I, I look, and there's Earl with his hands and his legs in the air, and just... He just gets laid out. Back was, I thought, honestly, I thought he broke his back. That's how bad it was. And he gets up and he's like, oh my gosh. I was like, man, was it worth it? <laughs> he's like, no, it wasn't worth it. I was like, Sigh. so he just starts coming back, starts calling back the log. You know, time fishing mishaps happen all the time. Another time, I was fishing up there in Nambe and I had the bobbler and I had the lead and I had my pistol key and it was windy. So the only thing, I mean, it was catchy, we were catchy, but it was way, way out there. So you had to throw that bobbler way out there in the middle of the lake. So one of the times I get it over here and I chuck it. And right as I throw it, the wind comes. And all I see is that bobbler going all by itself. Well, where's the hook? So I, I look like that, and I see this little piece of string hanging from my back. I hooked myself. I hooked myself good. And I'm there, and one of my friends is like, I tell him, hey, just pull it out. So he gets a pair of pliers, and he's, oh, I, I can't, it's, it's in your muscle, it's, it's, it's bleeding. I'm like, just pull it out. So he won't do it. So finally I had to go, and I had to look at the car mirror, and grab it and just yank it out. Fishing stories, right? I'm sure all of us have fishing stories. Fishing is very fun sometimes, but sometimes it's disappointing. Why is it disappointing? Can anybody tell me why fishing is disappointing sometimes? But what? But you don't catch, right? <laughs> you prepare, you pack sack lunches, your beanie weenies, your pot of meat, all these different taquitos, all these things that you're just ready to go fishing for, like expecting a big catch, right? And then you get out there and nothing is happening, no bites, nothing. The only bite you get is maybe a mosquito bite. And it gets frustrating, it gets tired, and you're like, man, all I got was a sunburn all day long, and here I am, and you just downcast, you're like, man, I should have never gone. Right? Can I hear me, man? Sometimes you catch and sometimes you don't. That's just the way of life. Amen? Hear me this morning. It gets frustrating, sometimes and tiring when you do not catch, when you put so much effort into it. Some of us here this morning have been fishing. You might be saying, Pastor John, what are you talking about? I hate fishing. How many of you hate fishing? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Come on, be honest. It's okay. If you hate fishing, raise your hand. How many will touch? How many like fishing, but you won't touch the fish? Some also, right? Hear me this morning. Let's just say that all of us, at one time or another, have been fishing. Let's just say that you're not fishing at a lake, you're not fishing by a river, but you're fishing. You've been preparing and working so hard to get something back in return, and you've been coming up empty. That's what I'm going to be talking about this morning is when you put something of effort into it, when you 
prepared, when you pack, when you plan ahead, and you put into something and you get nothing back, it gets frustrating, it gets tired, you're fishing. For some of us, we've been fishing for our marriage. You've been fishing for your job. You've been fishing for your kids. You've been fishing for your ministry or the ministry that God has placed before you. Or maybe you've been in the need of a healing and everything that you've invested, you've worked, you've prayed for, you've cried for, just keeps giving you back nothing in return. That's called fishing. So all of us have been fishing at one time or another in our lives. All of us have been doing that. It does get tiring when you've been giving everything you have to see some results, but you just keep coming up empty-handed. This morning, this might be you. You might be saying, Pastor, all this just feels like a fishing trip gone wrong. You know, I don't know what you're going through in your life. I don't know what you've been preparing for, planning for, investing in all these years, crying out to God for. But just coming up empty-handed time and time again. And you've tried everything, and all you get is an empty line. You see, there's a man in the Bible that knows exactly what I'm talking about this morning. And I want you to turn there with me to the book of Luke in chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. See, this man wasn't fishing for a couple hours or more, but he was out all night long. All night, this man was out there on the lake. He was out there fishing. And he was frustrated. He was tired. He was fed up. Because all night long, he caught nothing. And this was this man's way of living. This is the, the way that this man made money. And he was out there and he caught absolutely nothing. So we're going to be talking about this. And we're going to start here. In Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through 2, if you're there, say amen. amen. He was exhausted, he was fed up, and all of a sudden, everything changed for him in an instant. So let's start. So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Go to the next one. And saw two boats. Everybody say two boats. Standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. The fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. We're going to stay right there. You see, these men were frustrated and they were tired. And obviously they had given up because they were out of the boat and they were already washing their nets. They were done. Everybody say they were done. Come on, say they were done. They had abandoned their boats and probably grumbling and complaining and shaking their heads about the bad night they had just had. That's exactly what we all do when we have a bad fishing day. We shake our heads, we grumble, and we're like, man, all day we caught nothing. Now imagine with me that Jesus was out there by that lake. And there he was. And you can imagine if he was, if this is the lake that's going out that way, here's Jesus and he's standing there. And he's just getting pressed from every side. The Bible made it clear that it said a multitude of people were surrounding him. Not just a little, not just a couple hundred, but a multitude. We're talking about maybe three, four, five thousand people coming around Jesus. And at this point, he's just getting cornered. And people are coming from every walk of life. Because they know that this man can heal the sick. They know that he can make the lame walk. They know that he can heal the blind eye. They know that he is the master of the ways. That he can speak to the sea and say, be still. They know it. So they're coming after him. They want to touch him. They know. They've heard about him performing those miracles. About the lady with the issue of blood. And she just went and touched the hem of his garment. And instantly she was healed. And these people wanted to get near the master. I don't blame them. I would have been one of those people too. They're elbowing, they're pushing, they just want to get close to him. And in the midst of everybody, in the midst of all that, it says that he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them, and they were washing their nets. Hear me this morning. In the midst 
Of all that chaos and pushing and shoving, Jesus noticed two boats, but he focused in on one man. Say one man. So what am I trying to say this morning? People in the midst of your chaos and billions of people around the world, we serve a God who sees us. I said we serve a God who sees us. You might be feeling insignificant this morning. You might be feeling worthless. You might be feeling, hey, I don't have anything to live for. Just down on yourself. Down in the, in the ruts of life. But hear me. When you feel like that, remember that our God sees you. That our God sees you as significant. That our God sees you as the head and not the tail. My God sees you as somebody that he wants to bless, that he wants to love, that he wants to put his presence upon, that he wants to give life and life and abundance to this morning. Don't ever feel like God doesn't see you because if God was able to see this man right here, he could see you. Can I hear an amen? He sees you this morning. And he just wants to help you out of your situation. He knows what you're going through. He knows how many countless nights you've been out fishing and caught nothing, seen no results. He knows your frustrations. He knows your worries. And hear me this morning. Not one tear has gone unnoticed by the hand of God. Not one. He sees every single tear that you cry. And he knows exactly what you're going through this morning. Because he's God. And because our God cares. Because we serve the God who sees us and he knows us by our name. Don't ever feel like your problems don't matter or that you're insignificant to God. He sees you. Say that with me. Say, he sees me. Come on, church. You got to get this this morning. Say, he sees me. He knows me. And he knows me by my name. He does. He loves you. And he has an awesome plan for your life this morning. You see, he saw Simon Peter, and he could certainly see you. You were not lost in the crowd. But he has you, as Pastor was saying, in the palm of his hand this morning. Another thing that we can learn from this fishing story is that even though we get frustrated and we want to give up, we can't. And so don't do it. So when we plan on coming back another day, we begin to do what to our nets? Come on. I just read it. What do we do with our nets? We wash them. That would be like me not catching any fish and just getting my rod and just chucking it to the middle of the lake. I'm not going to do that. I just spent too much money on it. There's no way. I'm not going to throw my chocolate box. I'm not going to throw anything. Why? Because I enjoy it. Just because I'm frustrated for that moment, just because I didn't get a big fish in my mind that day, doesn't mean that I'm going to give up on fishing forever. No. I'm going to pack it all up. I'm going to put it back. And I'm going to go fish another day. And that's exactly what these men were doing. They were, they were fed up. They were messed up. I'm sure they were grumbling and shaking their heads and disgruntled with life for the moment. But still, they started to prepare. They started bringing their nets of disappointment. They started washing them and said, hey, yeah, we didn't catch. Yeah, I was messed up. Yeah, we're probably not going to get a payday today, but it's okay. Let's just wash our nets. Let's clean our nets. Let's take care of them. So the next time we come out, hey, we'll be ready, and we're going to catch. I'm sure Jesus saw this, and I'm sure he said, that's good. They haven't given up all the way. Now let me intervene. Let me do it. You see, church, and this is an awesome thing, that church should be a place that we all come to wash our nets. Church should be a place that we bring our problems, our letdowns, our frustrations, and we just bring them when we just lay them at the foot of the cross. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen, church? That's what church should be about. Yeah. That we bring them. They're heavy. They're messed up. They're full of junk. They're full of everything that we've been carrying out throughout the week. And we just need to start coming and just cleaning them at the altar. We just need to say, God, I'm just going to clean my net. I had a messed up week. I had some messed up things said about me. God, this is coming against me or that's coming against me or this or that. But God, I'm just going to clean my nets because I know you're with me. I'm going to clean my nets, God, because I know, I know that you're never going to leave me or forsake me, God. So I'm not going to give up and I'm not going to quit because I know that I serve a great and awesome God. I serve a mighty God. I serve a God that hears my prayers and he sees me. And he sees you this morning. Your nets of disappointment 
need to be washed at the altar of God. In verse 3, let's go there real quick. And it says that he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the multitudes from the boat. Now this is amazing to me. He was already, he had already abandoned his boat. He was out of it. He was washing his nets. He was done for the day. And then all of a sudden he looks back and there's somebody sitting in his boat. He's like, what are you doing? Now? I'm done for the day, sir. Well, there's Jesus and Jesus probably just there smiling at him like, hey, get back in the boat. <laughs> He's probably like, uh, I've been out all night. Human nature, I mean, it doesn't go there, but I have a good imagination, so I'm going there. He's probably saying, like, get out of my boat. And Jesus probably saying, no, I'm not getting out of the boat. You're getting back in your boat. Imagine with me. that The way it probably looked, I'm washing my nets. I'm done. I'm not fishing anymore. And Jesus is saying, just get back in the boat. Say, so get in the boat. Come on, say, get back in the boat. I'm sure that's what the conversation went, but it's not a scripture. But hey, we're going to say that it might have been. Okay? Jesus was probably smirking at him. <laughs> I'm sure Simon Peter was probably frustrated looking at him like, I'm not going to do this. But he got back in the boat. And he told him, let's just go out a little bit. And I'm going to teach from your boat. So he's like, okay, let's, let's just get this over with. I'm going to take you out and you can preach from my boat. And this is amazing to me. That when we get out of the way, is when Jesus gets in our boat. Did anybody get that? When we get out of the way, is when Jesus intervenes in our situation. There's so much to get out of this when I was just researching and looking at it. Man, you could, you could preach two, three sermons out of this. The moment that Simon Peter got out is the moment that Jesus got in. I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know your problem. I don't know what you've been fishing for. But sometimes we are the problem. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. yeah, you can give a big hand clap for that. Sometimes we just mess it all up. And we think, hey, I got this problem. I'm going to fix it. I got this situation. I'm going to do it. And God's saying, if you would just get out of the way and let me be God and let me get in the boat, I can fix it all for you. Amen. How many of you want God to fix it for you? Come on. How many want God to fix your situation this morning? There's only so much we can do. We're human. And yes, we think that we can fix it all and do it all. And hey, we can't. But the moment that you let go and you let God, you start to see the miracles happen. You start to see the hand of God moving. You start to see the blessings. You start to see everything start to unfold before your eyes. And then you say... We serve a great and mighty God. I said we serve a great and mighty God. Amen, church? We do. But we have to get out of the way. We do. Our attitudes, our character, all these things, they're just in the way sometimes. And God's saying, hey, just, just move. Come on. You've done everything you can. There's nothing left for you to do. Now just move. Everybody say move. Come on, say move. I'm sure you didn't tell Simon Peter that, but... <laughs> He might have. So I was just waiting for him to be like, hey, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Let me move. Let God move. Say, let God move. Let God Come on, say, let God move. Let God move. Another thing that you can get out of that is that the thing that Simon Peter saw as a mess is the thing that Jesus used to minister from. I'll say that again. The thing that Simon Peter saw as a mess, Jesus used it to minister from. You might be seeing and saying that your life is a mess right now. That you've messed up, that you don't know where you're going, that you have no direction. Can I tell you that God can still use your mess of a life for his honor, for his glory? Amen. You know that, church? Do you believe that? I said, do you believe that this morning? The thing that you see as a mess, God can turn it around and use for his glory. How does that scripture go, Pastor, that he uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise? 
All of us were a mess at one time or another. Can you hear me, man? Some of us might, might still be a mess. But it doesn't disqualify you. Hear me. It does not disqualify you. It just doesn't. God will still use your mess and use it for ministry. God will use your, your mess and he will bless it to help others. Can you hear me, man, church? He will. I tell you one thing this morning. That I will never get into the boat without Jesus getting in first. Amen. Never. And that's exactly the way it needed to be. See, they swapped places. Simon Peter wasn't the one that was getting in the boat. It was Jesus that got into the boat first. And then Simon Peter followed him. That's the way it needs to be in our lives this morning, church. Amen. We need to let God lead. We need to let God be God. We need to let him do what he needs to do in and through our lives and stop putting God in a box. We need to let God be God. And he did. He let God be God at that moment. But he said, get back in the boat. Come on. We're going to go do this thing. I'm frustrated and I'm tired. And I know you might be frustrated and tired this morning. You might be like Simon Peter. You might be with your head down. You might be like, man, this is not the way that life was supposed to be. I didn't imagine my life to go this way. We've all been there. But you got to get back in that boat. you got to get back with God and do what God wants us to do. Are you with me this morning, church? But don't ever get in the boat without God getting in first. I want God in my boat, and I need God in my boat. In verse 4, let's go to 4. It says that when he had stopped speaking... He said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now this is the kind of funny part. What was Jesus known as? Before that. Does anybody know? What? A carpenter. That's what his dad was, right? So you know that his dad was training him up to be a carpenter as well. And all of a sudden, we have Simon Peter, we have John, who was the other brother that was there? Uh, James, right? Simon, Peter, James, and John. And these guys were fishing, and they knew what was up. They knew how to catch fish. And all of a sudden, this carpenter, who doesn't know how to fish, is getting in the boat, and he's telling them, hey, guess what? We're not going to fish in the shallow parts. We're not going to fish just right here and right there. No, we're going to go out deep. And if you do your research, it's amazing to me, the Sea of Galilee, you couldn't catch fish in the deep. It was only in the shallow water that you would cast your nets, they would sink, and you'd pull them back in and you'd catch your fish. So Jesus, the carpenter, was telling the fishermen how to fish. And they're probably telling him, like, what are you saying? You want me to go out there after I fish all night long and I just clean my nets? And you want me to just throw it out there in the deep? Why? I can guarantee you they were questioning me. I can guarantee you they were saying, like, this doesn't make sense. I'm not going to catch anything. I'm going to waste my time. And Jesus is saying, I don't care. You want to do it my way or you want to do it your way? He says, let's go deep. Let's go deep. Say, let's go deep. Let's go deep, say it. It's amazing. It's amazing that when we do it God's way and not our way, we will always succeed. I said we will always succeed when we do it God's way and not our way. I promise you, when you do it God's way, even though it doesn't make sense sometimes, you're going to succeed in all you do. Can we give God a hand of praise for that? Come on. Let's go to verse 5. And we see the whole conversation coming up. And it says, But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night long, and we've caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down my net. Go to the next one. And when they have done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets were breaking. 
So they signal, the watch this, pay attention to this part. So they signal to their partners in the other boat to come and to help them. And they came and they filled both boats. So they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I'm a simple man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished. All of the fishermen that were there with the boats were shocked out of their minds. They were blown away. They were speechless. At the catch of fish were dead, which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, and were the partners of Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, Simon. From now on, you will catch men. From now on, you're going to catch men. Let's go to the next one. And I love this part. So when they had brought their boats to the land, they forsook all and they followed him. They left it all behind. It doesn't say that they went to go sell their fish. It, I mean, I'm sure that that was a huge amount of fish and they were going to get a whole lot of money for this stuff. But it says they left it all behind. They abandoned their boats. They abandoned their boats. Are you with me this morning, church? We got to let stuff go in our lives. We got to let stuff go to follow hard after Jesus. We have to let stuff say, hey, yeah, that's a lot of stuff right there. Yeah, that's worth a lot of money. Yeah, that's a future. Yeah, that's this, that's that. But is it God's future? Is it God's will for my life? Is it God's blessing? If it's not God, I don't want it. Are you with me this morning, church? That stuff will only last for a little while. But if it comes from God, it's going to last a lifetime. I said if it comes from God, it's going to last a lifetime. It is. And they understood that. And it's an amazing portion of scripture. You know what I believe? That I believe that the miracle was so great and so awesome to Simon Peter that the moment that he went out, he launched into the deep, something that he's never done before, something that he was not accustomed to. And Jesus said, hey, just do it my way. And Simon Peter said, okay, it's crazy, but I'm going to do it. The moment that he did it and he started to pull it, I can guarantee you, at that moment, he was speechless. He probably started crying. He probably started saying, this is a miracle. What is happening? I don't understand this. And I guarantee you that he was so caught up with tears and emotions and seeing the miracle that God had just brought upon his life that he couldn't yell, hey guys, come over here and help me with my fish. All he could do was just do this. He just signaled. When he could have screamed and he could have yelled, but for whatever reason, he couldn't do it. The Bible doesn't say, but that's the way I would have taken it. If I'm seeing a miracle from God, if I'm seeing the blessings, if I'm seeing something that I prayed for, if I'm seeing something coming to pass that I've been longing for, and just, just crying out to God for it, coming to pass right there in front of my eyes, there's no way that I'm going to be talking. There's only going to be a way that I'll be praising God. There's only going to be that way that I'm going to just be worshiping God at that point. And I, pr I promise you that this is probably what happened with Simon Peter, that it was speechless. When is the last time that God left you speechless? When is the last time that you experienced God's miraculous working hands in your life? When is the last time that you allowed God to be God? When is the last time that you let go of everything that you hold dear and followed hard after God? And then you started seeing the miracles start happening. When is the last time? You see, we're not accustomed to that anymore. We need to see the miracles of God happening in our lives. Can you hear me, man? Yeah. Do you want the miracles of God happening in your lives, church? Yeah. We need that. I said we need that. Yeah. And he saw that and he experienced God's miracle working power. Another thing we can get out of that is that Jesus told Simon Peter. Hey, Simon. And again, I'm paraphrasing. Just imagine. Me. You could stay where you're at. Simon. 
You could do things the way that you've always done them. Or you could start to follow me. And you could start to catch men instead of fish. How many of us are willing to stay the same that you are right now? How many of you are willing to, to deal with what you're dealing with right now? Or how many of you would rather do it God's way and experience the blessings and the miracles like never before? How many want the miracles of God and the blessings of God like never before? Now, it's going to cost you. I said it's going to cost you. Nobody likes to hear this part. Everybody wants the blessings and everybody wants the miracles. But when, I, when it comes down to it's going to cost you, everybody's like, oh man, I knew there was a catch. Can I tell you that when you give it all to God, when you give your life to God, when you allow God to use you in a greater and mighty way, there is nothing better in life, I promise. There's not. When you feel God's hand of approval upon your life, when you feel God saying, well done, son, well done, there is nothing better in life than to feel God's approval over you. Nothing, nothing, nothing will ever satisfy, nothing will ever compare to it. Nothing. Everybody say nothing. So this morning, we need to be like Simon Peter and let everything go. To go hard after God. Say this with me. Say, I want to go. Say, I want to go hard after God. Say, I want to go deep. Say, I want to go deep. Those deep waters. Those deep waters are amazing. And Simon Peter forsook all, and he followed Jesus. The word forsook means to abandon something. To let go of something of pleasure in your life. That was a pleasure to him. He enjoyed that fishing expedition. He, that was what brought him money. So what brought him life. And he left it all behind. I said he left it all behind to follow hard after Jesus. And he was never the same. He was never the same. Your life, when you follow hard after God, and you forsake everything else, your life is never going to be the same. Can I tell you that you, we become ruined for God? We do. Ruined for God. How can you even say that phrase? Why? Because nothing else is going to satisfy my soul. Nothing else, no other presence, no other person, nothing else is going to satisfy like the presence of God in my life. Nothing, nothing. I want God. I want to experience God like never before in and through my life. I want the miracles that God has. I want the blessings that God has. I don't know about you, but I can feel something changing in the atmosphere. I can feel a shift in the spirit. Yes, things have been coming our way. And yes, we've been facing trials and tribulations and mockeries and all this other stuff, but it's okay. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in that world. And let him talk and let him say whatever they got to say. But I know at the end of the day, I serve a great and mighty God and I will do what God has called me to do and I will go where God has called me to go and I will say what God has called me to say. And I don't care. Hear me this morning. The thing that I do care about is God's approval. Is that I do it by the word of God, through the word of God, and that's it. You do it that way, you will succeed in all you do. Amen, church. We got to do it God's way regardless. Regardless. Whether there's opposition, whether there's waves, whether stuff starts happening, we need to do it God's way. And it's amazing. It's amazing, church. You see, I believe that it's time, Victory Bay Church, that we start to cast our nets. I believe that it's time for us to see a change in this church. It's time that we go out into deep waters. It's time that we stop doing things our ways and in our power and start doing it in God's way and God's power. Can you hear me, man, church? Do we believe that this morning? See, I believe that God wants to leave Victory Faith Church speechless. 
He wants to leave us speechless, church. He wants us to get to the point to where we're just in awe, with our mouths wide open, saying, "This is only from the hand of God." Yeah, How many want that? Pastor JD, I believe that God wants to leave you speechless. For everything that you've been through the past couple months, God is going to turn it around for you. And the enemy might come and the enemy might roar and might do whatever he's going to do. But the blessings are on the way. Amen. And just like Simon Peter experienced his miracle, just like Simon Peter was speechless, God is getting ready to leave you speechless. To where you're going to say, this is only by the hand of God. We give God a hand of praise for that. So I believe that there's a greater blessing that is getting ready to be poured out upon Victory Faith Church. The enemy has been fighting and bringing trouble from every side. But God. But God. Remember that sermon? But God. Everybody say, but God. Come on, say, but God. But God. But God will turn it around for our good. Can we give God a hand of praise for that this morning? The Victory Faith Church. God is in our midst. Amen? God is in this place. God is going to do it. And I believe that the Lord is telling us that we can stay where we've been and we can still catch the normal fish that we always have. Or we can venture out into the deep waters. We can do those things that are risky. We can go out with God. When God says go to the deep, I know it doesn't make sense, but go there. I truly believe God is telling us Victory Creek Church, that it's time to go out into the deep waters with him in our boat, and that's where we're going to see the miracles of God happen. Can we give God the hand of praise this morning, church? You see, it's amazing to me. There's times where you're saying, God, why is this happening? God, what's going on? But then you are reminded in the scriptures. Hey, these things have to happen. I used Joseph till I'm blue in the face as an example. That if Joseph was never sold into slavery and put into Potiphar's house and all these other things and all these thrown into the pit and sold into slavery from his brothers and then put into the into the Potiphar's house and then all of a sudden he's there into the jail cell. If all these things did not happen, he would not have seen the miracles of God happen in his life. We're just getting ready for our blessings. I said, we're just getting ready for our blessings. So let it come. Let it come. Whatever has to happen, let it happen. But at the end of the day, I know that I serve a great and mighty God. I said, I serve a great and mighty God. And I know, I know, that he's not done with Victory Faith Church yet. He's not. What I feel in the spirit this morning is he's barely scratching the surface. That we barely even got there. And God's saying, okay, you've got there to, you know, you're at your, your lake moment. Now it's time to go deep. You've done what I told you to do at this point, at this level. At this time. Now it's time to go out. Now it's time to go deeper. Now it's time to receive the miracles. Now it's time to receive the blessings. You've toiled. You've troubled. You've had hardships. You have things come against you. But now it's time to receive the blessing. Your miracle is on the way. We will never again be disappointed on these fishing trips. But we will begin to see the hand of God move like never before. But it's time to cast our nets. It's time. It's time 
to do those things that don't make sense. And it's time to do it God's way. Say it's time to cast our nets. Come on, say it's time to cast our nets. The blessing is on the way. But you have to be willing to be led by Jesus to go out.